Dante's Inferno is the first part of his three-part epic poem, The Divine Comedy, written in the 14th century and considered one of the world's great works of literature. Inferno is followed by Purgatorio and Paradise. Those approaching Inferno, for the first time, might benefit from a brief structural description. This is Dante's journey through the nine circles of hell, guided by the poet Virgil. At the beginning of the story, a woman, Beatrice, calls for an angel to bring Virgil to guide Dante in his journey so that no harm will befall him. Here are the nine circles of hell in order of entrance and severity. First circle, the limbo. Dante's first circle of hell is resided by virtuous non-Christians and unbaptized pagans who are punished with eternity in an inferior form of heaven. They live in a castle with seven gates, which symbolize the seven virtues. Here, Dante sees many prominent people from classical antiquity such as Homer, Socrates, Aristotle, Cicero, Hippocrates, and Julius Caesar. These souls are not in a state of torment, for they were not sinners during life, but their spiritual condition in the eyes of God forbids them from ever entering heaven. This differs somewhat from purgatory, a different sort of holding place for souls after death. Purgatory is not part of hell, but rather a medium between earth and heaven. It is populated by those Christians who sinned in life but repented and those who died without their last rites. Souls in purgatory may appeal to God through constant prayer for the opportunity to ascend to heaven. Depending on the individual soul, it is sometimes a torturous affair, but it is temporary. This makes it different from limbo, which is still an eternal fate, though a generally neutral place. Second Circle, Lush. In the second circle of hell, Dante and his companion Virgil find people who were overcome by lust. They are punished by being blown violently back and forth by strong winds, preventing them from finding peace and rest. Strong winds symbolize the restlessness of a person who is led by the desire for fleshly pleasures. Again, Dante sees many notable people from history and mythology, including Cleopatra, Tristan, Helen of Troy, and others who were adulterous during their lifetime. Third Circle, the Gluttony. When reaching the third circle of hell, Dante and Virgil find souls of gluttons who are overlooked by a worms and monster Cerberus. Sinners in this circle of hell are punished by being forced to lie in a vile slush that is produced by never-ending icy rain. The vile slush symbolizes personal degradation of one who overindulges in food, drink, and other worldly pleasures, while the inability to see others lying nearby represents the glutton's selfishness and coldness. Here, Dante speaks to a character called Tiaco, who also tells him that the Guelphs, a fraction supporting the Pope, will defeat and expel the Ghibellines, a fraction supporting the Emperor to which Dante adhered from Florence, which happened in 1302 before the poem was written after 1308. Fourth Circle, Greek. In the fourth circle of hell, Dante and Virgil see the souls of people who are punished for greed. They are divided into two groups, those who hoarded possessions and those who lavishly spent it jousting. They use great weights as a weapon, pushing it with their chests, which symbolizes their selfish drive for fortune during their lifetime. The two groups that are guarded by a character called Pluto, probably the ancient Greek ruler of the underworld, 
are so occupied with their actions that the two poets don't try to speak to them. Here, Dante says to see many clergymen, including cardinals and popes. Everyone sentenced to this circle is guilty of greed, the act of hoarding and being miserly. Dante sees many souls here, far more than he has seen in the other circles, and sees their punishment. The fourth circle is divided into two halves by a great trench. Half the souls charge the others with large rolling weights, while the others fight back. Both sides yell at each other. The spenders ask the hoarders why they have so much, and the hoarders yell at the spenders to find out why they have so little. Fifth Circle, Anger. The fifth circle of hell is where the wrathful and sullen are punished for their sins. Transported on a boat by Flagias, Dante, and Virgil, see the furious fighting each other on the surface of the river and the sullen gurgling beneath the surface of the water. Again, the punishment reflects the type of sin committed during their lifetime. As Dante and Virgil travel on sticks in the fifth circle of hell, Dante sees more souls fighting on the muck. The mud chokes them and keeps them from expressing themselves. Dante is then greeted by the soul of Filippo Argenti, a Florentine politician who gave in to his anger. Dante doesn't have much to say to him and watches as other souls tear him apart. Dante eventually sees high towers, and Virgil tells him they are Diaz, the city of Satan. The city's huge iron walls contain the lower levels of hell within and are guarded by both angels and demons. The angels are fallen angels, those who rebelled against God and sided with Satan. While Virgil manages to convince other guards in hell to let them pass, the angels and demons initially do not and instead jeer at Dante and Virgil. Like the other circles, the fifth circle punishes the souls within in a manner that evokes their sin in life. Sixth Circle Heresy when reaching the sixth circle of hell, Dante and Virgil see heretics who are condemned to eternity in flaming tombs. Here, Dante talks with a couple of Florentines, Ferenata degli Uberti and Cavalcante de Cavalcanti, but he also sees other notable historical figures, including the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus, Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II, and Pope Anastasius II. The latter, however, is according to some modern scholars condemned by Dante as a heretic by mistake. Instead, as some scholars argue, the poet probably meant the Byzantine emperor Anastasius I. Seventh Circle, Violence. The seventh circle of hell is divided into three rings. The outer ring houses murderers and others who were violent to other people and property. Here, Dante sees Alexander the Great, Dionysius, Guy de Montfort, and many other notable historical and mythological figures, such as the Centaurus, sank into a river of boiling blood and fire. In the middle ring, the poet sees suicides who have been turned into trees and bushes which are fed upon by harpies. But he also sees here profligates, chased and torn to pieces by dogs. In the inner ring are blasphemers and sodomites, residing in a desert of burning sand and burning rain falling from the sky. Eight Circle, The Frog. The eighth circle of hell is resided by the fraudulent. Dante and Virgil reach it on the back of Geryon, a flying monster with different natures. Just like the fraudulent, this circle of hell is divided into ten bulges or stony ditches with bridges between them. In Bulge 1, Dante sees panderers and seducer. In Bulge 2, he finds flatterers. After crossing the bridge to Bulge 3, he and Virgil see those who are guilty of simony. 
After crossing another bridge between the ditches to Bolgia IV, they find sorcerers and false prophets. In Bolgia V are housed corrupt politicians. In Bolgia VI are hypocrites, and in the remaining four ditches. Dante finds hypocrites, thieves, evil counselors and advisors, divisive individuals, and various falsifiers such as alchemists, perjurers, and counterfeits. The Ninth Circle, Treachery. In Dante's imagined descent through hell, he reserved the Ninth Circle, the lowest, blackest, and farthest from heaven, for the sin of treachery. The worst sinners in his underworld were the traitors, those who betrayed their loved ones, their country, and their God. Dante's punishment for treachery, while less gruesome than the English version, was more fitting for the crime. Traitors in the Ninth Circle lie buried in a lake of ice formed by the tears of Lucifer, the angel who betrayed God. Lucifer's flapping wings keep the lake frozen solid so the guilty cannot move and freeze the tears of those who try to weep. In committing treachery, Dante believed, these sinners deliberately broke the bonds of love and human fellowship and are therefore condemned to an icy landscape that lacks the warmth created by the heart. So cold-blooded are the sinners in this circle that some of their souls are punished in hell even as they remain alive on earth. The last ninth circle of hell is divided into four rounds according to the seriousness of the sin, though all residents are frozen in an icy lake. Those who committed more severe sin are deeper with the ice. Each of the four rounds is named after an individual who personifies the sin. Thus, round one is named Kaina after Cain, who killed his brother Abel. Round two is named Antonora after Antonor of Troy, who was Priam's counselor during the Trojan War. Round three is named Ptolemya after Ptolemy, son of Abuus, while round four is named Judeca after Judas Iscariot, the apostle who betrayed Jesus with a kiss. To the poet's astonishment, Virgil is able to pass down below Lucifer. Dante follows, and the pair climb down the devil's legs where they find a channel to the center of the earth that will lead them out of hell to Mount Purgatory. It is there that Dante will finally be reunited with Beatrice in Purgatorio. Emerging on the other side of the world, Dante's journey through the underworld and the inferno has come to an end before the dawn on Easter Sunday. Thence we came forth to re-behold the stars. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our latest video updates.